Okay, so in this video, let's go ahead and diagonalize our matrix A. And to do this, we'll have to do a couple things. One, we'll have to find the eigenvalues of our matrix A, and also the an eigenvector that goes with each eigenvalue. And I'm going to assume that, that you have seen this before, but I will go through quite a few of the steps just to remind you, because uh, usually finding eigenvalues and eigenvectors, uh, you see that material not... Uh, you usually see it pretty closely to this material, so it doesn't hurt to, I think, refresh. Okay, so to start off by finding the eigenvalues, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my matrix A, I'm going to subtract away lambda times I, and what that does to my matrix A, it just takes the entries along the main diagonal, and it subtracts lambda from each of those. Otherwise, it leaves the other entries, right? It leaves all of the other entries just like they were. Okay, so easy peasy so far. Now, what we have to do is we have to next compute the determinant of that, because again, once I have the determinant, I'm going to set it equal to zero and solve. So to compute the determinant, I'm going to expand along this first row. So if you've forgotten how to find determinants of 3x3 three three matrices, I, got, I, I have you covered. I have videos on those. So the idea is I'm going to take this top left entry. So I've got my 4 minus lambda. If I cancel out the entries in that row and column, if you look at what's left, we're going to compute that smaller determinant. So 1 minus lambda, 0, 0, 1 minus lambda. So we still have to compute some determinants, but it's just we've reduced it uh, to a 2 by 2 is the idea. We need that 4 minus lambda to be in parentheses. The middle term is a negative, but notice next if I uh, use that 0, I don't really care what's in there um, because it's just going to be 0 anyway. So... We'll save a step there, and then we take a plus, so it says it's plus 1. And again, if I cancel that row and column, I would have negative 2 multiplied by 1 minus lambda, negative 2 times 0. So, okay, so to compute a 2 by 2 determinant, we just multiply along the diagonals. So I would have 1 minus lambda times 1 minus lambda, which is 1 minus lambda squared. And then we subtract away the product of the other diagonals, which is just going to be 0. So the middle term we said is just 0. And then I'm going to have a plus. It looks like we would have negative 2 times 0. So that's just 0. And then it looks like we would have negative, negative 2, which would be a positive 2 and 1 minus lambda. So check my arithmetic. I jotted this down pretty quickly. I think this is all okay. Again, the main idea, you get the characteristic polynomial, simplify it. Now, I collected like terms and simplified, and lo and behold, this factors really nicely as lambda minus 3 multiplied by lambda minus 2 multiplied by lambda minus 1. Okay, so... Again, we take all of that, that characteristic polynomial. So again, this, what we've just found again is known as the characteristic polynomial. If we set that equal to zero, we're going to get those eigenvalues. So it says lambda equals three, lambda equals two, lambda equals one. Those are going to be the eigenvalues. Okay, so, so far so good. So step one is done. Um, a minus lambda i, find the determinant, set it equal to zero, solve. Okay, so what do we do once we have those eigenvalues? Well, now we have to find an eigenvector for each eigenvalue. Well, how do we do that? We just go through the following process. For each eigenvalue, <clears throat> so I'm going to do it for lambda equals 2 and lambda equals 3. Um, it's the same process for lambda equals 1. You can practice that one. I will give it to you, though, as well. So for lambda equals 2, now we just take a minus 2 times i. So again, all we're doing is we're just subtracting 2 from all of the entries along the main diagonal. So if I do that, 4 minus 2 is 2. I'm going to go along the main diagonal. So 4 minus 2 is 2. 1 minus 2 would be negative 1. And again, 1 minus 2 would be negative 1. And everything else stays the same. So 0, 1, 
negative 2, 0. I'm thinking about my matrix A, negative 2, 0. Now what we do is we tack on some extra zeros here. So I'm going to get rid of the equals because it's not equals anymore. We're doing something else. What I want to do is try to row reduce this. Okay, so here's my matrix. I'm going to row reduce this. Let me go ahead and I think I had this copied. Let's just get rid of this. Okay, so now I want to row reduce this. So to do that, I think I could take row one plus row two. That would give me my new row two. So I'm going to leave the first row alone, two, zero, one. I'll leave the zero. So two and negative two, that would be zero. Zero and negative one is negative one. One and zero is one. Zero and zero is zero. Whoops. So, and let's do one more row operation. So how about row one plus row three? That's going to give me my new row three. So two and negative two, that will be zero. Zero and zero is zero. One and negative one is zero. And zero and zero is zero. Okay, so this is nice because notice we have this row of all zeros, which means we have a free variable. So I could write this, for example, um, suppose we could write this as the system 2x1 plus 0x2 plus x3 equals 0. We could have negative x2 plus x3 equals 0. x3 is just going to be a free variable. So I could, <clears throat> again, just do a little bit of of arithmetic here. So if I do my little bit of arithmetic here for this first one, I could write that 2x1 equals negative x sub 3, but then I could just divide both sides by 2. So we'll have, let's rewrite that, that looks so terrible. How about negative 1 half x sub 3? Notice that x sub 2 and x sub 3 would actually just be equal. And again, x sub 3 is free. So now just pick a value. Notice if, let's say, x3 equals 2, then what are our other values going to be? Well, if x3 equals 2, x1 would be negative 1 half times 2, which is going to be negative 1. And since x2 and x3 are the same, if x3 equals 2, well, x2 also equals 2. So now this gives us the eigenvector. So it says x1 is equal to negative 1, x2 is equal to 2, and x3 is equal to 3. So this is going to be our eigenvector. Okay, that's good. That's useful. So now we need to do this process again. We would do it for lambda equals 3 and also lambda equals 1. So I'm keeping that, that eigenvector we just found. I'm keeping that in my pocket. We'll, we'll come back to that here in a, in a moment. <clears throat> so... A minus 3i, what's that going to be? 4 minus 3, that's 1. I'm going along the diagonals. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. Um, and then 1 minus 3, again, is negative 2. We'll leave the other entries alone. And I'm just going to check my arithmetic off to the side here, making sure I'm not doing some little sign mistake. Okay, so the same thing. There's my A minus 3i. A minus 3i. And now, again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to do some row reduction and see what happens. So I don't think this one took too many steps. Let's see. What can we do? So it looks like if I take 2 times row 1 and add that to row 2, that's going to give me my new row 2. So let's see what happens there. So I'm leaving the first row alone. So 2 times 1 is 2, minus 2 is 0. We'll still get a negative 2. 2 times 1 plus 0 is going to be 2. This will still be a 0. Looks like we could do the 2 times row 1 plus r3 to get my new uh, row 3. So again, that's going to be 0, 0, 0. Hey, this one's also 0 and 0. So again, notice just like before, we've got this... Uh, this row, so we have at least one free variable. That's good. I'm going to do the same thing. So this would be, I'm going to write it as x1 plus x3 equals 0. And then we would have negative 2x2 plus 2x3 equals 0. So again, I'm just labeling my columns x1, x2, x3. You can think about this as being the constant. 
the line as being my little equal sign. Okay, so this tells me what? That x1 simply equals negative x3. This again uh, is just going to tell me that x2 equals x3. And again, x3 is free. We've got a free variable. So again, just pick a value. So if we let um, x3 say equal 1, then x2 is also 1. They're the same value. And x1 is the negative of that, which would be negative 1. So our eigenvector is going to be negative 1, 1, and 1. Okay, now if you do this, um, so if you go through the same process for lambda equals 1, so go through this exact same process, you'll find an eigenvector is, what did I get the eigenvector to be? Where'd it go? Um, I got the eigenvector to be 0, 1, 0. Again, just by going through the process we did for lambda equals 2 and lambda equals 3. Now we're almost done. So it says to construct P, well, really we've done the hard part. So it says to construct P, we take those eigenvectors. And I'm going to do them, um, you have to be careful the order you go in too. So this is the other important thing. You can't just willy-nilly throw the eigenvectors in anywhere and the eigenvalues in anywhere. They have to match up. So I'm going to put my 0, 1, 0 first. Notice this corresponded, that eigenvector came from the eigenvalue of lambda equals 1. We said for lambda equals 2, what did we get? This was our eigenvector for lambda equals 2, negative 1, 2, 2. So there's negative 1, 2, and 2. That went with lambda equals 2. And you don't have to label these lambdas at the bottom. I'm just putting them there for our own benefit. And then we said when lambda equals 3, that eigenvector was negative 1, 1, 1. Perfect. So that's P. Now to get D, to get D, again, whatever, um, so the first column went with the eigenvector of 1. That's the eigenvector you have to put along the diagonal. The second column went with the eigenvector, or excuse me, the eigenvalue. The second column had the eigenvector um, that came from the eigenvalue of 2. So we need to put 2 there. Lastly, this eigenvector came from the eigenvalue of 3. That needs to go in the bottom. And zeros everywhere else. So now we're done. We've found P, we found D, and I'll leave it to you. You can find, I think the question only specified, find P and D. You can find P inverse if you want, just by finding the inverse of our, of our matrix P there. But we've now uh, diagonalized our matrix, and again, this turns out to be a very, very useful property, a very important property in linear algebra.